Heavenly Father, as the sun paints the sky with the colors of a new day, I bow before you with humility and thanksgiving. Thank you for the precious gift of life and for allowing me to witness the breathtaking beauty of each dawn. Today I offer myself completely into your hands, trusting in your guidance and wisdom. Show me the path of goodness and righteousness and fill my heart with your boundless love so that I may share it selflessly with others. Leave a like for this video and share it at least one time to help us reach more people. Spread the gospel and change more lives comment using the word Amen. In the face of whatever you're dealing with today, God wants you to know that your help comes directly from Him, the Creator of heaven and earth. We're about to embark on a heartfelt prayer together, calling on God for divine protection and abundant blessings in the name of Jesus. Stay with us until the end, open your heart, and be ready to receive the uplifting power of this prayer. Grant me the clarity to understand your will and the courage to follow it faithfully. Let your spirit dwell within me, guiding my thoughts, words, and deeds throughout this day. You, Father, are the ultimate source of healing. I pray for your gentle touch to mend every broken part of me, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Bring restoration and wholeness, not only to my life, but also to those who are in need of your comforting grace. Today, strengthen my faith in your promises and in the beautiful plan you have for my life. Help me to surrender completely to your will, knowing that your love never fails and your ways are higher than mine. Dearest Lord, I earnestly seek your presence to surround me as I navigate the challenges and joys of this day. Be my strength when I am weak, my hope in times of uncertainty, and my peace in the midst of chaos. I surrender my heart, desires, and ambitions to you. Let your purpose prevail in everything I do, and may your name be glorified through my life. Thank you, Father, for your endless grace and boundless love. May I walk in your footsteps and radiate your light to those around me. John 4 verse 14 says, Whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up to eternal life. I embrace this promise and find comfort in the eternal life you offer. To you, Father, I give all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's dive into some powerful verses together. As we explore the words of God, notice how often we're reminded to be watchful. It's not just about keeping our physical eyes open, but also staying spiritually alert. In Revelation 16 verse 15, it's vividly stated, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Pay close attention to the blessing in being watchful. Why watch? The Bible suggests there's a special blessing for those who live their lives eagerly, anticipating the return of Jesus Christ. Delve into the profound words of Mark 13, verse 32 to 33, unveiling the mystery that even the angels and the Son don't know the day or hour, only the Father does. Mark advises, Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 6, echoes this sentiment, urging us not to sleep as others do, but to be watchful and sober. In 1 Peter 4, verse 7, a sense of urgency prevails as it declares, The end of all things is at hand. The directive is clear. Be serious and watchful in your prayers. Matthew 26, verse 41 adds, Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Today I encourage you, dear friends, to immerse yourselves in these verses. Focus on the concept of watching. Why does the Bible emphasize this? I believe it's a call to be vigilant in anticipating Jesus Christ's return, to be attuned to God's movements, interventions, and guidance. Keep both your spiritual and physical eyes wide open. Watch and pray diligently. Keeping your mind on God means being unwavering and focused on divine matters. When you watch and pray, your attention remains steadfast on God and you avoid distractions from temptations, worldly influences and relationships. By staying vigilant in your watching and praying, you create no space for the devil or anything leading to destruction. Consider this, are you actively watching and praying? As saints of God, it's crucial to safeguard our spirits, minds and hearts. 
we face a constant onslaught of influences and temptations, with various forces seeking our attention and an opening to disrupt our lives. Guarding our hearts, minds, eyes and ears becomes essential, as these are gateways into our lives. In the midst of these challenges, we need the Holy Spirit more than ever. With the Holy Spirit's guidance, we can attain discernment, identifying deception, and recognizing when something that seems godly is, in fact, glorifying worldly values like pride and pleasure. Embrace the Holy Spirit's help to navigate the complexities and maintain a steadfast focus on God. Guidance from the Holy Spirit is vital as we navigate the complexities of life while safeguarding our faith, joy and mental well-being. Let's be honest and acknowledge that not everything on television is beneficial for our souls and not every piece of music or encounter is uplifting. The devil's deception lies in leading us into a false sense of security. The adversary wants us to perceive something inherently evil as harmless entertainment. He hopes we'll watch content that plants seeds of lust or compromise and convince ourselves it's just a movie, it's not real. However, even if it's just a movie, it can still sow seeds in our minds. Satan's strategy involves subtly opening the door, allowing the spirit of fear to enter our lives. He won't openly admit to sowing fear. Instead, he might disguise it as a seemingly harmless, haunted house experience at an amusement park. The key is to be discerning and rely on the Holy Spirit to guide us through these challenges, ensuring that we protect our hearts and minds from the subtle deceptions of the enemy. Indeed, even seemingly small and insignificant things can serve as gateways, so seeking guidance from the Holy Spirit is crucial. It's essential to recognize that what may appear minor can be a gateway leading to greater challenges. We must pray for discernment. Spiritual discernment is a valuable gift from the Lord, serving as a process that enables us to sift through the devil's deception and grasp the truth of God. As saints, we should earnestly pray for discernment, asking the Lord to remove the scales from our eyes. May he unveil the spirit behind the things we watch, the music we hear, and the places we visit. Let discernment be a prayer point in our lives. May the Lord grant us the ability to distinguish between what aligns with his truth and what is deceptive. Pray that God reveals the true intentions of those entering our lives, distinguishing between those genuinely for us and those sent by the enemy. In seeking discernment, we open ourselves to the divine wisdom needed to navigate a world filled with both subtle and overt challenges. Let's pray together. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you seeking your presence in our lives. We acknowledge our need for the Holy Spirit's guidance, direction and discernment. As we approach you, we recall the wisdom in 1 John 4 verse 1 that urges us not to believe every spirit, but to test them, for many false prophets exist in the world. Lord, teach us to discern. Through the Holy Ghost's guidance, empower us to test each spirit, make us sensitive to the Holy Spirit's voice, especially when it comes to what we watch, listen to, where we go, and with whom we spend our time. May the Holy Spirit reveal the true spirit behind the things we expose ourselves to, the content we watch and the music we listen to. Most importantly, grant us discernment regarding the people in our lives. Help us to discern whether it's a spirit from you or if the devil is scheming to bring destruction. We recognize the importance of discernment concerning the individuals around us. We understand that the devil can use people with the intent of discouraging us or leading us into sin. Lord, we need discernment to navigate these challenges and to stay aligned with your will. Grant us the discernment we seek, Lord, for we place our trust in you. Heavenly Father, I lift my heart to you, seeking your revelation in my life. I ask that you unveil the individuals sent by the enemy, those who are orchestrated by the devil to disrupt my peace, sow discord and bring confusion within me. Lord Jesus, I earnestly seek your guidance and discernment. Expose every person sent by the enemy to rob me of my peace of mind and divert me from my calling. Your word in Ephesians 5 verse 6 to 10 warns against deception and urges us not to become partners with those in disobedience. I pray, Lord, that you reveal those who may lead me astray. As your child, I desire to walk in the light as Ephesians encourages us. Grant me the discernment to recognize what is pleasing to you. May your light shine brightly, revealing every hidden motive and intention. 
I thank you, Lord, for bringing me into the light and guiding my steps. Heavenly Father, I come before you seeking your guidance and discernment regarding the relationships in my life. I pray for the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to lead me in choosing the right people to allow close to me. Lord, help me identify those who genuinely love you and desire to please you. Father, grant me discernment to distinguish between true followers of God and those who may be false prophets. In this world full of both wolves and sheep, help me see beyond appearances. Holy Spirit, open my eyes to recognize those speaking from a genuine connection with your word and those tainted by deceptive doctrines. I acknowledge, Lord, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces of darkness. Help me discern the motivations behind the words of those around me. Illuminate any spirit of pride or selfish gain and reveal those who speak to glorify you. I surrender to your guidance, Lord, and I trust in the discernment that comes from the Holy Spirit. May the relationships in my life be aligned with your will, fostering love, unity, and a genuine pursuit of your glory. In the powerful name of Jesus, I rebuke every evil force in my life. I welcome only your truth, King Jesus. I open my heart to your light and invite your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray this prayer. Amen. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. Therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers. Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not become partners with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good, right, and true. Try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Our steps are ordered by the Lord, signifying that nothing happens by chance, God has orchestrated your time in the lion's den, but he has also ordained moments for you to cross the Red Sea. In the fiery furnace he guides you, but he also arranges times of feasting, preparing a table for you in the presence of your enemies. The God of heaven is in control. It's not about our skills or luck. It's all about God's plan, his will, and his perfect timing. This divine ordering of our steps is emphasized in various scriptures, Psalm 37, verse 23 to 24. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Proverbs 16, verse 9. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Psalm 119, verse 133. Direct my steps by your word, and let no iniquity have dominion over me. Finally, Psalm 23 verse 3 assures us, He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Throughout the Bible, the theme resonates that the steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord, and He directs our paths. Sometimes it may feel challenging when we are unsure of God's next step for our lives. The uncertainty doesn't mean the Lord isn't guiding us. When we don't know our next step, Psalm 119 verse 125 reminds us, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This implies that we can be directed through faith by reading God's word, so do not fear if you don't know every step the Lord has for you. Instead, trust in him and his word. Let faith guide you, knowing that God's plan unfolds as you walk in alignment with his revealed truths. Before we enter into prayer, let's consider a few aspects you may encounter when God is leading you. Firstly, when God guides, relationships may undergo changes. Picture your life as a ship embarking on the vast sea of God's purpose. His leading may bring about the ebb and flow of relationships. People who were once tightly connected to your journey may drift away. While this can be a challenging aspect of following God's path, 
It's also a sign of his leading. Not everyone will accompany you on your calling, and not everyone will support or encourage you in the things of God. In Luke 14, verse 26, Jesus says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. This isn't about hatred, but about prioritizing our relationship with God above all others. So remember, just as a butterfly must leave its cocoon behind to fly, sometimes we must leave old relationships that no longer align with God's purpose for our lives. Secondly, when God leads, the pain you experience will always serve a greater purpose. Along the journey, you may encounter moments of pain and trials, but remember that these challenges are shaping you for a greater purpose. Just as Joseph faced hardships, everything he went through was geared toward God's greater calling. Romans 8 verse 28 assures us, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. Finally, when God leads, you will find inner peace. Imagine a lighthouse standing firm by the ocean during a fierce storm. Similarly, we can find inner sanctuary in God's presence, dwelling in the secret place even amid life's storms. When God leads, you will experience an inner peace that transcends understanding. Philippians 4 verse 7 promises, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So, dear friend, make a commitment today saying, I will let God lead every aspect of my life. Let us pray, my Lord, I thank you for ordering my steps. You are my good shepherd, leading me to lie down in green pastures and beside still waters. I am grateful for your guidance through the hard and painful seasons of life. Thank you for your protective hand, ensuring that I do not walk into destruction. I surrender to you completely, inviting you to take full control. Guide me in my decisions, my thinking, and in all that I do. Whether I am at work or at home, with friends or family, I invite you, Lord Jesus, to be my guide. Only under your guidance can I find peace in my heart. I pray that the voice of the Holy Spirit will be strong and distinct in my life. Grant me the discernment to differentiate your voice from my own selfish desires. Holy Spirit, empower me with the strength and boldness to walk, act, and obey God's will for my life. I trust in your guidance, Lord, knowing that you lead me in paths of righteousness. I want to always say yes to you, Lord Jesus. I desire a heart that is willing and yielded to your guidance. Remove all fear and confusion from my life, eliminating everything that might hinder me from walking in your way. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of fear and I refuse to be fearful in any area of my life. Fill me with your word, Lord Jesus. Let there be a deep persuasion in my heart to spend more time meditating on the Bible. May my heart be so saturated with your word that there is no room for sin. Where I am unstable, steady my feet. Where I am indecisive, grant me clarity and peace of mind. I pray for steadfastness, asking that you place me on steady ground. Lord, I ask you to destroy worry, fear and all anxiety from my life. I desire to live in the truth of your word, as stated in Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I declare my trust in you, Lord, and I choose courage over fear. I pray that I will not be afraid or discouraged, Lord. I trust that you will be with me wherever I go, ordering my steps and leading me. I commit to obey your word and walk by faith because the God of all power is guiding my path. Grant me the grace to consistently trust in your direction every day. Lead me, Lord Jesus, for if God is for me, who can be against me? No one can stand before my almighty Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lead me, Faither, because on my own, I may not always make the right decisions. Yet, if you are directing my steps, I know that your amazing grace and favour will surround me. I seek your wisdom, Lord, and I willingly submit to your will. I submit to all of your ways. I declare that I will trust in you with all my heart, leaning not on my own understanding. In all my ways, I will acknowledge you because in doing so, 
you will make straight my paths. I praise you, the God of the universe, the creator of the heavens and the earth. I will forever sing your praises as I adore your holy name. Thank you for hearing this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Psalm, I want to give you seven reasons why you should not be fearful. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Take note of two crucial points here. Firstly, according to the Bible, fear is not just a feeling or a state of mind. It is a spirit. Secondly, the Bible explicitly states that fear is not from God. Therefore, if fear is categorized as a spirit, and a spirit that is not from God, it means fear is an evil spirit. So, dear friend, you should not fear because God has not given you an evil spirit. He has not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love and sound judgment. This includes personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. Fear is a spirit that comes straight from the pits of hell and therefore you must wage war against it. Stand firm in the assurance that God has equipped you with the spirit of power, love and a sound mind. Jesus Christ didn't die on a cross so that you would live in a fearful and tormented state. As children of God we must understand that worry, anxiety and fear are the devil's weapons of choice because they are silent killers. The second reason why you should not fear is that God will come to save you. Isaiah 35 verse 4 delivers a powerful message. Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. So my question is, why would you fear when the Bible tells you that God will come and he will come to save you? Why would you be anxious when the Bible assures you that God will come to save you? For any problem you face, nothing will destroy you. It may be painful, it may hurt, but it will not destroy you because God will come to save you. Trust in his promise, stand firm, and find strength in the knowledge that your God will come with divine retribution to save you. For the third reason, we turn to the words of Jesus himself in Luke 12, verse 22 to 32. Jesus tells his disciples, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear. For life is more than food and your body more than clothing. Look at the ravens. They do not plant or harvest or store food in barns, for God feeds them. And you are far more valuable to him than any birds. Jesus goes on to emphasize that worrying cannot add a single moment to your life. If worry can't accomplish even a small thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? He points to the lilies how they grow without working or making their clothing, and yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. Jesus assures his followers that if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. He questions their faith, encouraging them not to be concerned about what to eat or drink. In essence, Jesus urges us to trust in God's provision and care, highlighting that our worrying adds nothing to our lives but takes away from our faith in a loving and capable God. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world, but your Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and he will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your Father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Our Lord has told us not to be anxious about our life. This means that we should not allow the things of this life to affect us because we are in the care of an almighty God. The fourth reason why you should not worry is that the Lord invites us to present all of our requests to Him. The Bible in Philippians 4 verse 6 to 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We are instructed to make our specific requests known to God, and something miraculous happens when we pray and tell God all of our needs and requests. We are promised that the peace of God, a peace that reassures the heart and transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts. This tells me that if you're worried, pray about it. If you're afraid, Pray about it because when you go to God with all of your requests, 
you will be blessed with peace. The fifth reason you should not fear is that God is in control. The Amplified Translation of Psalm 73 verse 26 says, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the rock and strength of my heart and my portion forever. When you let fear dominate your life, you're holding on to the illusion that you are the one in control. However, true peace comes when you rest in the knowledge that God is sovereign. He is always in control, neither sleeping nor slumbering. While we don't know the future, God is already there. While we can't let go of the past, God is already in the past, working out your present and your future. The sixth reason why you should not be fearful is that we are commanded not to. The Lord tells us in Isaiah 41 verse 10, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. As believers, our lives should not be dictated by fear, but rather by our faith. Our lives should not be crippled by worry, but rather empowered by the Holy Spirit. Trust in God's commandments and promises, knowing that He is with you, strengthening, helping, and upholding you. We are commanded not to fear, and when a person is fearful, they are seriously doubting the Lord and His promises. Doubt arises despite the clear promise in the Word of God, which declares, I will strengthen you and help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The seventh and final reason why you should not fear is that in times of trouble we have a refuge, a place to run to. Psalm 46 verse 1 to 3 says, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam, let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. God is always ready to help in times of trouble. Just as the psalmist says, when earthquakes come or mountains crumble into the sea, we should not fear. Why? Because in Jesus, we have a strong tower, a secure refuge and a shelter. So what shall we fear? Trust in God's refuge and strength, knowing that he is always ready to help in times of trouble. Now let us pray. Lord, I bless your holy name and I praise you for your goodness. I thank you for the many blessings you have given me and above all, for your word that tells me you have not given me a spirit of fear. I am grateful for this assurance, King Jesus, and it's because of your word that I will not fear. It's because of your word that I will not be afraid. Should I come face to face with adverse situations, let me not be afraid. Let me not entertain fear. Should the enemy attempt to use fear as a weapon, I rebuke that spirit in Jesus' name. Should the enemy attempt to discourage and intimidate us with the spirit of fear, I rebuke that spirit in Jesus' name. I thank you for your word in Isaiah 35 verse 4 that says, Say to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Father, I pray in agreement with everyone listening. We receive your word and we will not be anxious. We will not have anxious hearts. We will not have panic-stricken hearts because the hand of God Almighty is over us. The Lord of hosts watches over us. The God of the ages is our deliverer. If God is for us, who can be against us? With you, Lord, being with us and for us, fear has been defeated in our lives. The devil has been defeated, and he has no power over us. The strength to overcome fear, anxiety, and worry comes from you, King Jesus. Grant us the strength to stand in the face of opposition to declare in a world filled with fear that Jesus Christ has not given us a spirit of fear, timidity, or cowardice. Instead, he has given us a spirit of power, love, sound judgment, and personal discipline. I believe and declare that the Lord has given us the grace to live a life filled with peace and joy, possessing a well-balanced mind and self-control. Father, your word in Joshua 1 verse 9 says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would empower us to stand when the spirit of fear wants us to fall. Give us strength and courage when the spirit of fear wants us to be weak and afraid. We are blessed and we rejoice in the knowledge that you, Lord God, are with us wherever we go. Lord, we humble ourselves, submitting and surrendering to you, the mighty God. 
Help us to set aside self-righteous pride and any thoughts that tell us we are strong in our own strength. Instead, we cast all our cares, anxieties, worries and concerns to you, Lord Jesus, knowing that you deeply care for us and continually watch over us. Your word in 1 Chronicles 28 verse 20 says, Be strong and courageous and do it. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed, for the Lord God, even my God, is with you. He will not leave you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the house of the Lord is finished. May your word be established in our lives, and we will not fear in Jesus' name, because you, Lord, will never leave us or forsake us. Heavenly Father, I come before you with gratitude and reverence. I thank you for your boundless love, mercy and grace. In this moment of prayer, I lift up my heart, seeking your guidance, strength and peace. Lord, I surrender my fears and anxieties to you, knowing that you are my refuge and strength. May your presence surround me, dispelling all doubts and worries. Grant me wisdom to navigate life's challenges and may your light illuminate my path. Father, I entrust my dreams, aspirations and struggles into your hands. Be my guiding force, directing each step I take. Fill my heart with courage, faith and unwavering trust in your divine plan. I pray for the well-being of my loved ones, asking for your protection, healing and abundant blessings upon them. Let your love reign in our relationships, fostering unity and understanding. Lord, I seek your forgiveness for any shortcomings and sins. Wash me clean and renew my spirit. Help me grow in grace and live a life that reflects your love. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Please feel free to type Amen in the comment section if this message resonates with your spirit and you'd like to join in prayer. Your participation extends the reach of this message, touching more lives and spreading the message of faith and hope. To further support the dissemination of this message, consider sharing this video with a friend or family member. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay updated with more content that nourishes the soul and uplifts the spirit. The journey continues and the Holy Spirit remains our constant companion, our ever-present guide. In him we find the wisdom, strength and love we need for each day.